Okay, so kakapakita lang po natin kung paano ba ang paggamit ng Lewis symbols para mag-draw ng Lewis structures ng simple diatomic covalent compound. So ngayon, medyo isi-stretch po natin ang ating grasp ng uh, Lewis theory at ng Lewis structures sa so kung paano po ba natin i-draw ang chemical or i-describe ang chemical bonding sa mga compounds na mas marami sa dalawa ang atoms na bumubuo dito. Okay, pero bago po tayo pumunta dyan, kailangan muna nating pasadahan. Ano ba yung mga mahahalagang strategies pagdating sa pagsulat ng Lewis structures ng polyatomic molecules? So, unang-una, gaya na sinabi ko kanina, all valence electrons of the atoms in a Lewis structure must appear in the structure. So, ibig sabihin po, magbibilang tayo lagi ng valence electrons. At kung ilan yung bilang ng valence electrons from the atoms involved in or present in the compound, dapat makita po natin lahat ng electrons na yon sa Lewis structure. So, secondly, this is a very important rule. So, usually, all the electrons in the Lewis structures are paired. Okay? Most compounds, when they form, they tend to pair up all of their electrons. So, kapag nakakita po kayo ng unpaired electron, typically, that's a red flag. Kasi that's a signal or that's an ind indication that that structure is a non-stable structure. So, ang, ang nature, hindi niya i-favor na mag-form yung ganong structure kung merong naiiwang electron na walang kapares. So, pangatlo po, usually, each atom acquires an outer shell octet of electrons. So, you know, ex in, for the, uh, in the exception of hydrogen, lahat po ng no, mga elements na may encounter natin when it comes to covalent bonds, they tend or the, the resulting configuration of all the atoms in the covalent compound will have an octet of electrons. And pangatlo po, sometimes kapag po um, nabuo na ninyo yung uh, initial structure or arrangement ng mga elements or atoms in space to form the compound, minsan ang, con ang connectivity po ng mga atoms na ito um, could be achieved via single covalent bonds pero meron din po mga elemento na kaya mag-form ng multiple covalent bonds. So, pwede po tayo magkaroon ng double bonds, pwede po tayo magkaroon ng triple bonds. At narito po ang uh, ilan sa mga examples ng mga elemento na kaya mag-form ng multiple bonds. So, nandyan ang carbon, nandyan ang nitrogen, nandyan ang oxygen, phosphorus, at ang sulfur atom. So, papakatandaan po natin ito um, sa pag-solve natin ng mga susunod na questions. Bilang paghahanda po sa pagsulat or pag ng Lewis structures ng mga mas komplikadong covalent compounds, narito po ang isa sa mga unang hakbang na dapat din natin gawin. So, unang-una, kailangan marunong tayong mag- sulat or mag-draw ng plausible skeletal structure. So, when sabi, when, pag sinabi po natin plausible uh, uh, skeletal structure, ito po yung pagkakasunod-sunod or yung orientation in space ng lahat ng atoms na bumubuo sa isang covalent compound. At ilan po ba ang klase ng atoms sa isang covalent compound? Meron tayong dalawang klase ng atoms sa covalent compound. The first is the central atom or yung central atom kung saan nakakonekta ang karamihan sa iba't ibang mga atoms na bumubuo ng covalent molecule. Ang pangalawa na po ay ang terminal atom. So, ang terminal atom, so ito lang po yung mga atoms na nasa gilid. So, for example, sinabi natin kanina, ang hydrogen can only form a maximum of one covalent bond. So, ibig sabihin po noon, ang hydrogen atom ay laging nasa mga gilid-gilid. Sila lang ang nakapaligid sa mga central atoms. So, gaya nga nang nabanggit ko kanina, ilan sa mga bagay na dapat tandaan, ang hydrogen atom ay palaging terminal atom dahil isa lang ang maximum number ng bond na pwede nilang ma-form. Ang pangalawa, central atoms are generally those with the lowest electronegativity. So, uh, ang electronegativity po ay ang property ng isang element to attract electron towards it. So, so kung ikukumpara po natin ang mga elements na say, nasa parehas na period, so dun sa hilera ng boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. So, as you move to the left of the periodic table, pataas ng pataas po ang electronegativity ng mga elements na ito. So, ibig sabihin, ang fluorine ay mas electronegative in comparison to nitrogen. So, kung magpo-form ng 
compound ng covalent bond between nitrogen and fluorine atoms magiging central atom ang nitrogen. So that is how that works. So electronegativity is key. So pangatlo po, whenever carbon forms a covalent molecular compound, carbon is always a central atom. So pakatatandaan po natin ito. And then lastly, molecules and polyatomic ions generally have compact and symmetrical structures. So kung halimbawa, meron po tayong uh, compound na merong sampung elements, sa halip na gumawa tayo ng napakahaba na linear molecule, ang tendency po is to come up with the most compact structure. Medyo mahirap pong i-explain itong pang-apat na guidelines. So makikita po natin ito mamaya sa isang example na gagawin natin sa dulo. Okay, so wag po natin kakalimutan ang guidelines na ito. Okay, ngayon naman, sulatin natin ang Lewis structures ng methane, ammonia, at water. To challenge namin kayo, dadamihan naman natin yung ganap. So, ang kailangan po natin gawin is we have to draw the Lewis structures of these molecules, um, all covalent compounds. Methane, CH4, ammonia, NH3, and water. Okay. Po, mahalaga uli, may sulat natin yung Lewis symbols muna, no? Com elements uh, that comprise each molecule. So, in the case of carbon, okay, hindi na po muna natin babalikan ang kanya electronic configuration kasi nagawa na natin ito kanina. So, sabi natin, merong apat na unpaired electrons around carbon. And then now, Meron naman tayong ilang hydrogen. So, meron po tayong apat na hydrogen atom. So, each hydrogen atom will have an unpaired electron. Right? So, uh, ang mangyayari po dito, since carbon and hydrogen are both non-metal, so, ibig sabihin, nagpo-form sila ng covalent bond. So, itong electron na, it, na ito ng hydrogen will be shared or itong dalawang, election pair, itong dalawang elections na ito will be shared between carbon and hydrogen. Same as this pair, same as that pair, and same as that pair. And we know, we know uh, during, this part, this, during this process, so carbon will end up having eight elections around it, and each electron pair is shared with hydrogen. So ngayon, ang tanong, does this satisfy the requirements of uh, the Lewis theory for both carbon and hydrogen to be stable. So, ano ba requirement for hydrogen? Sabi natin for hydrogen, for it to be stable, it has to have two electrons around it. So, this hydrogen has two electrons. This one also has two. The same as this one and this one. So, it satisfies the requirements of, for, for hydrogen. Now, in the case of carbon, for, it, for carbon to be stable, it needs to have eight electrons around it for it to be isoelectronic with the element neon. So, bilangin natin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So therefore, this satisfies the octet rule or the octet requirement for um, for carbon. So, kung susulatin po natin yung Lewis structure of methane, this will be carbon having four single bonds around it. And each single bond is connecting carbon with hydrogen. Again, each covalent bond is called a bonding pair. Tatandaan po natin ito, ano? Bonding pair. Ngayon, ang tanong, meron bang lone pair? Meron bang lone or meron bang pairs of electrons around carbon na hindi nakabond sa ibang uh, element? So, wala. Tatandaan natin yan. So, um, um, methane has four bonding pairs. So, in the case of ammonia, the nitrogen center has a total of five valence electrons so we one um paired one uh, paired pair of electrons and then three unpaired electrons and then um yung ammonia has three hydrogen centers so kailangan din natin i-account yun so hydrogen meron tayong tatlo and each each um neutral hydrogen atom should have or should come with one unpaired electron so Similar to what we did earlier, we have to figure out a way um, to share our to 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 um, combine these elements to satisfy their requirement, their electronic 
um, requirements for them to be stable. So, kaya dapat yung hydrogen will end up having two electrons around it. Um, and then, also, then nitrogen should have an octet of electrons. So, in this process, these electrons will pair up, these will pair up, and also these will pair up. And in the process, what you will get is a structure where nitrogen has eight electrons around it satisfying the octet requirement. And then, three of these electron pairs are shared with three hydrogen atoms. So, kung susulatin naman natin ang Lewis structure ng ammonia, it will look like this. So, three nitrogen-hydrogen single bond or covalent bond, and then a lone pair. In this case, we call this, again, ang sabi natin kanina, a bonding pair. And this is what we call a lone pair. So, ang lone pair po, it occupies space um, around the atom. Similar to a uh, nitrogen hydrogen covalent bond, it also occupies space. So, tatandaan po natin yan. So, ammonia has three bonding pairs and it, it has like one lone pair. So, our third example is water. So, kailangan muna natin isulat yung Lewis symbol for for oxygen. So, oxygen has six electrons around it. Two unpaired electrons and two um, paired electrons. And sabi natin, meron tayo dalawang hydrogen atoms, each of which has one unpaired electron. And for us to be able to uh, form the structure and to satisfy the requirements for hydrogen and oxygen to be stable, what we can do is that, you know, we can... Um, pair up these unpaired electrons. So in the process, you will get the structure where oxygen has eight electrons around it, again, satisfying the octet rule, and then each hydrogen atom is sharing a pair of electrons with the oxygen center. So ito, so dalawa ang electrons around each hydrogen atom. So again, both um, hydrogen and oxygen become stable um, along the process. And the resulting Lewis structure, if you would uh, represent uh, the shared electrons in terms of a covalent bond or, or, or a bonding pair, it will look like this. Has two bonding pairs and two lone pairs.